Jason Campbell is with us today to talk about micro-budget Christian filmmaking. His company is scheduled to release 20 films this year alone, and they will launch their own streaming platform. Welcome to the Ministry of Motion Pictures podcast, where only the foolhardy and headstrong dare to venture. For within these humble halls, you may find your heart stirred to join the ranks of a Christian film movement to storm the world with God-glorifying media. But be forewarned, this undertaking will lead you down a perilous road of hardship and scorn. And so, if you're committed to pursue this life of woe, brave soul, I now leave you to your resolute guide, writer and director, Todd Schaefer. I've become very interested in the world of micro-budget filmmaking. The unparalleled democratization of filmmaking that we've seen happen in the last 20 years has not only made it easier for filmmakers to make first films and develop their craft, it's become an opportunity for Christians to regain a strong voice of faith in film. It can take years, if not decades, for any film to be made if it ever does get made. And chances are, unless you have experience making films, who is going to risk millions of dollars on you and your project? I'll give you a hint. No one. But if you make a micro-budget film, you have a better chance of finding financing. And part of your financial package is that you've written a script that can be done economically. The other reason I become more interested in micro-budget filmmaking is creative and theological control. As a filmmaker, I want control. And I don't want a producer or studio exec telling me to tone down my theology. And that's what you're going to have to do if you go the traditional route. My guest today is a Christian micro-budget filmmaker, and his approach to filmmaking is in the same spirit as Nollywood filmmakers. Nollywood was built on micro-budget filmmaking, and today its output rivals that of the U.S. and Canada combined. Now, the highest producing Hollywood studios release an average of 10 to 30 films per year. Altogether, studios in the U.S. and Canada release about 700 to 800 films per year. Last year, Disney released 10 Universal 11, Sony released 13 films, Apple Originals released 13, Paramount 14, Warner Brothers 19, Amazon Studios 28 movies, Lionsgate 33, Gravitas Ventures 53, and of course Netflix, the, the big gorillas, they released 92. JC Films last year released 13 films. This year it's scheduled to release 20 films. Has any Christian film studio ever produced more than 10 films per year? Christian film studios produce at most one or two films per year, sometimes one film every two to three years. JC Films will release 20 this year. That's more than Disney, Universal, Sony, Apple, Paramount, and Warner Brothers. And what's also surprising is that the headquarters for JC Films is not in LA. It's not in New York or Chicago or Atlanta or Nashville. J.C. Films is based in West Virginia. How is this little West Virginia Christian micro-budget studio able to do this? Well, J.C. Films has 22 production clubs across the U.S. The clubs gather creative people together who write, plan, and make micro-budget films at a grassroots level. J.C. Films provides organization, guidance, teaching, motivation, and sometimes resources. Their catalog currently has over 50 movies, and they tour their films by hosting free Christian film events at churches across the U.S. And in June of this year, they're going to launch their very own streaming platform called JC+. Plus. Jason Campbell is the JC of JC Films, and he's with me to talk about his vision, his company, his work, and lessons learned after making 50 micro-budget Christian films. This is Episode 57. It's been fascinating looking at what you've been doing and what JC Films has been up to. You have a lot going on, so I just want to unpack what, what JC Films is about, what your, your process is, what your plans are, and how you're doing things with the production clubs and all that. So I started JC Films 11 years ago with Eric Estrada, of all people, and uh, we made about four or five films together. What was interesting was we would we did the grassroots thing. So we we went and toured our films around to churches. And 
um, well, what happened is, of course, at the end of the screening, Eric would, was gracious enough to stay there all night long and sign autographs and take pictures. And I was bored. Uh, and so I'm standing there <laughs> watching him do all this. And people would come up to me and say, hey, I wrote a book or um, this happened in our community or this is something that's going on in our church. And the idea of making one film, which was Finding Faith with Eric, uh, was great. But then all of a sudden, all these other ideas started coming about. So uh, we would take these ideas and start working with these churches and making church-based films about things in their community or book or something. And it was wonderful. So we made a bunch of films. I think in total right now, uh, we've made over 50 movies. Um, so it was a good process. You know, we were making films for simple stories, what Jesus did, simple stories under trees and changed the world. So that's kind of what was our, what we mm. were doing. Um, never thought about production club or anything like that. But the more I start doing this, the more it became obvious that people of faith are very interested in Christian entertainment. You know, we spend so much time saying things like Hollywood's evil and don't go see movies and right. it's all corrupt. And we never really did anything proactive to do anything right. like the culture, especially in entertainment. And the more I traveled, the more I saw that there were a lot of people um, people of faith that were very talented in, in, in videography and acting, and they wanted to do things to glorify the Lord in these gifts that they had. They didn't, they didn't know, you know what to do. I tell this story a lot. You know, the lady that started Weight Watchers tells the story about how when she was a young girl in college, she went to a playground. She noticed that these kids were just sitting in the swings and they were just sitting there and she would look over to the parents and the moms were over there just talking and not saying anything uh, and not pushing their kids. And so she would go to these kids and she would push them and, you know, little by little, their feet started swinging back and forth and they got higher and higher, a little bit of exercise. And I think that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to just give that push. Um, so we started these things called JC Films Production Club. And right now we have 22 of them across the country. And it's just a hub of people of faith that come together that are interested in creative filmmaking, actors, production people. Um, so they meet on monthly basis. They come up with ideas. They come up with script. And they come up with their own content. Mm. We're just that little push that helps them get that content actually into a feature film. And, you know, we've been so blessed to have actors like Dean Cain and Kevin Sorbo and Eddie McClintock that have come side with us and said, hey, we love what you're doing and we'll support it. We'll, we'll be involved in these things. And so um, that's been our growth. That's been our pattern. And, and I, mm -hmm. if JC Films exists for anything, of course, it is to make good quality faith films. But on the side of that, too, is how do we get more people of faith involved in the process? Right. So are these all self-funded or they just have various different kinds of funding? They all come from various ways. You know, some of these clubs yeah. are funding their own projects. Um, sometimes my wife and I decide to take some of the distribution dollars that are coming into the to JC Films to help these clubs start off with new films. For the most part, that's how this is going, is we've been funding a lot of these new projects for clubs just to get their, you know, their feet swinging, if you yeah, will, right. and give them that push that they need. Um, but we've got clubs that have been in existence for less than a year, and they, you know, they're on their third or fourth film. Uh, we have some clubs out there that are still just trying to figure out what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, they've been very successful in, in finding their own identity. You know, a, a, a club in uh, Los Angeles, California, as you know, is going to be different than a club in Paducah, <laughs> Kentucky. Yes. Um, so, um, and we're learning all that process with these different clubs. You, mm -hmm. you know, there's a cultural difference. There's a geographical difference. There's a, there's a difference in expectations that people yeah. may have. Um, right. When you go to more rural areas in South Carolina, North Carolina, or Ohio, they just love it, you know, and there's everyone that wants to get involved. You go to a place like Phoenix or Los Angeles or even Atlanta, this is where a lot of content's being made. So it doesn't, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You, you do a lot of training within these production clubs because you, yeah, yeah. you got, you got, even got a national director for yep. your clubs and a trainer for your clubs. Yep. How, how does that work? Well, um, we started these things with me going to the different areas and starting doing acting classes. Hey, how do, how do 
how do Christian people get involved in Christian entertainment? So I would go there and do a one day workshop and we'd have, you know, dozens and dozens and hundreds of people come out to these things and say, what is this all about? Tell me about JC films, Mm -hmm. play some improv games and get into some fun stuff with, with everybody to kind of see where they are. That kind of launches the club and kind of gets people to say, Hey, this is kind of cool. We want to do this in our town. And so that's kind of launches everything to get things going, but like anything else, you got to have some type of structure. Um, I, uh, we, we have you ever heard of moose lodges you know yeah which I, so uh i did a documentary for them years ago and i kind of organized this as a moose lodge now we don't have the the beer drinking and the bingo but the structure is kind of the same <laughs> so the moose uh fraternity is kind of organized they have a head moose and then each one of these little clubs are independent clubs uh mm-hmm. they raise their own money they do their own thing they they have some guidelines that they have to go by and but for the most part they're they can basically do what they want to do. And so we've set it up kind of like that. Uh, Again, minus the bingo and the beer. Um, So we do have a a national field director that just kind of works with each club to make sure there's a lot of questions, as you can imagine, people beginning, how does this work? What's the structure? What are some ideas on fundraising? What are some ideas for scripts? We just brought in a lady to come in to just kind of help with the training. So whether that be some acting classes uh, to get people fresh in their chops and people that have, you know, what we're seeing a lot of is we're seeing a lot of people that did theater in high school and college, and yeah. then they got into life and um, they have a vibrant relationship with the Lord and their church. And maybe the kids are out of the house and they're going back and saying, I used to love theater and I'm not using it anymore. And the church really isn't offering uh any more plays anymore. And I want to use it. So we're finding these people coming out to us and saying, Hey, we want to freshen up a little bit and get involved in some filmmaking. And so just to have somebody that kind of is traveling around and helping with that, as well as organizing how we like to do productions, how we Mm -hmm. like to shoot a film, how we like to use the community in different areas. So we, you know, kind of have a common theme going into each of our projects. Mm. So the, are the productions mostly grassroots within each one of these clubs or is, is there, do you hire professionals to be involved? It's good. It, it depends on the club and it depends on where we are. Mm-hmm. Um, we have about six or seven production teams that we've used in the past, whether it be from Ohio or Phoenix or Florida. Um, sometimes they'll travel to a particular location to shoot a film. It depends on the budget. Depends on their timing, their availability. Um, there may be guys in a certain area that will shoot the film. I give an example. We just started a club in Grand Rapids, and we started the club there because the cinematographers up there that want to start the club are phenomenal. Mm. I don't need to bring a production team up there because these guys yes, got it. Right. Um, so it just really depends on each club. And, mm. of course, all that stuff comes into play, budgets, timing, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So you're just basically whatever it takes whatever equipment you have and if you have a bigger budget you can bring up a bigger team but yep. it, it's more of a because I, I just did a series on nollywood and so i i was very interested in how nollywood has become like the second or third largest producing film producing country in the world uh over and above ho- hollywood sometimes in some years um how they started within 20 years to do that and they were just get it done. You know, whatever we got, we're going to put it together. We're going to do it and get it done. And it sounds like you uh, are sort of doing that within the Christian space in, in America. Yeah, I, I still think Christian films is where Christian music was. You remember 30 years ago, 20 years ago, Christian music wasn't that good. But it has evolved in this multi-billion dollar business. Yeah. There's, there was heard a statistic the other day that, 50% of people that listen to Christian music aren't believers. That, that oh. means it's good. It's good content. They, they're enjoying it. And I think that's the same thing with faith films as we have just seen. I mean, it's, it's pretty new. Um, yeah. And yes. it's, now that we have more smaller independent studios making faith content, um, we're seeing this growth that's happening. And I think this growth will continue for the next mm-hmm. forever until films continually get better and better. Yeah. And I think your audience will agree with me. Faith films are getting better. You know, yeah. 10 years ago, it was rough. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, it yeah. was rough. But we loved them because they were for us. And, and we, we love the redeeming stories. And we love to see those stories, mm-hmm. that, you know, have changed the world. 
but they are getting better. And yeah. uh, so that's exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. Now, are you distributing them on your own platforms or are you, are they going out to streamers? How, how, and, and, and I know some of your films are free on YouTube. Um, so what is your, your plan with your distribution? I uh, hope not too many of them are free on YouTube. I mean, um, the, the piracy in Christian films is kind of, it, okay. it's kind of ridiculous. The fact that, you know, somebody has a ministry in the Philippines and they rip your film off and they put it up there and you try to get it down. I mean, we have to monetize these things or we can't keep it yeah, for sure. Um, and that's kind but of, I, funny. I think the one I saw was from JC films. Yeah. I mean, we have our own streaming platforms. We, um, there's two things on that. One is you still have to go through Hollywood to get distribution. And mm -hmm. sometimes that can be an ugly mess. And yeah. so in addition to that, sometimes, uh, people in Hollywood have moved to the Christian genre to do distribution and they've taken advantage of a lot of, of, um, filmmakers, yes. Christian filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So about three years ago, we stopped all that and said, we'll just do it ourselves. And so I literally took three months off work with everything that we had and just learned distribution. Mm. And so if we're going to do it. We're going to do it ourselves. And so of course we have our own streaming platform. We're getting ready to launch JC plus, which is a, a free, um, it will be free, but it'll be like Tubi. So it'll be an yeah. ad thing that people can watch. We're going to launch that with over 200, um, faith films and most mm -hmm. of them, the ones that we've done. Uh, but we, we basically handle our own distribution. We connect with all the other various people without going through any third party or having other people involved in the process. It just kind of dilutes everything yeah. uh, financially and as well as the message. Yeah. I mean, it, it, this is a time where it's become democratized and you can release everything. You, you don't really need a platform, but at the same time, it's extremely difficult to make money. It uh, is on these platforms and, and what we have now. So that that's the, that's the catch 22. Uh, and I think that's going to change because you got to remember it, you know, it was only three years ago that if you made a, a decent faith-based film, then you put a Dean Kane or Kevin Sorbo or an Eric Estrada on the DVD, you can sell them all day long at Walmart. Uh, but mm -hmm. that DVD model's gone. So that's, yeah. and that hurt a lot of filmmakers because yeah. we we're counting on it. And then we got into the digital world. We're yeah. all, I still think everyone's just trying to figure that out. Now it's been three yeah. years since Amazon, you know, started its prime and Netflix, of course, and all that stuff's just developing. Yeah. And I think there's a huge opportunity for the faith market to take, mm -hmm. take, take hold of that, that we yes. haven't done. And we have great companies like pure flicks and some other ones, but um, I think there's room to grow in that area. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. It is an animal that's nobody knows what, what it's going to be yet, but they're throwing yeah. lots of money at it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, and it changes. I mean, yeah. you know, it changes so fast that um, one platform will be at this level on monetization. And then the next thing, you know, you get an email and it it's, it's half what they were paying. And then it's all part of this uh, crazy algorithm of theories that yes, I'm not sure who comes up with it. Um, yeah. When we were trying to uh, get our film uh, distributed, we, we went around to sales agents and the sales agents were just perplexed. They had no idea what to do or to say about anything. So, um, and that was just a few years ago. So, you know. It's, yeah, we, we've been down that road and I just learned that if, if they don't know what's going on and, and, but they want to keep all the money, I just figured I'll just figure out what's going on and we'll yeah. monetize it ourselves. Yeah. I think that's a good plan. It might take some time, but yeah. it, in spite of that, are you able to turn a profit on any of these films? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, some of them hit hard and some of them don't. We're a, a major, you know, we'll, we'll do 20 films this year. Yeah. Uh, some will monetize well and some won't. Um, yeah. Again, it comes to a lot of, it's a lot of variables involved. It could mm -hmm. be story. It could be who's in it. It could be the algorithms on where it's hits in, in digital media, yeah. it could be the timing uh, is the subject matter where it needs to be. So there's, does it release on the date that it needs to release versus where it needs to be? You know, mm -hmm. does God have some type of favor on this film versus another? Uh, all these different variables come into play. Um, and it's really hard to, to, it's really hard as a filmmaker to, because people will say things to you like, you know, get a dog and get a horse and make a movie because dogs and horses sell. Well, there's some truth to that, I guess, but um, 
the quality of your film, who's in it, just not just a dog and a horse. So yeah. I don't know if I, I've made films with large budgets that I have really enjoyed watching with great quality and good performances. And it has all the bells and all the whistles. And it doesn't perform as well yeah. as some films that I've done for, you know, $25,000, $30,000 budgets that aren't shot well. And sometimes those films that have good stories yeah. seem to seem to do well. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not much different than Hollywood because, you know, Hollywood on average makes five out of five films. Only one will will turn a profit and it pays for the other other four. Yeah. <laughs> do well. So, I mean, I think that's just the nature of the beast about what um, production budget range does your films fall in? Would you consider them all micro budget? Oh yeah, reach low budget, so they're all micro budget films. And it it depends, you know. Probably fifty percent of the films we make are client based. That means, hey, Jason, I wrote a book about this happened in my life, and I would like to do a film on it. Cool. Oh. Then what are you thinking about on your budget? What do you what what can you afford? We have never turned down a client because of money. Uh, we figure it out if it's something they're passionate about. A lot of it is ministry driven. Uh, expect you know something happened uh, in their life and now they're creating a ministry where they're sharing that experience with other people, whether it be in talks with churches or, or touring yep. churches, I'm talking about that kind of stuff. So film gives them a lot of credibility, especially when you have a Dean Kane or a Kevin Sorbo, mm -hmm. you know, involved in that project, they can go and say, Hey, I made a Dean Kane film and, you know, I'd like to come to your church and speak about, Right. this topic depression or abortion or whatever these things are that you know these things happen yeah. so we've seen a lot of that you know and, um you've got a lot of nonprofits out there uh that are trying to figure out how do we connect to the masses how do we get people to know about what we're trying to do in our nonprofit space and film's a good way to do that uh, mm -hmm. because films reach a national audience yeah so we see a lot of that when and what we're doing and so that would be mostly your documentaries or do you do narrative stuff along those lines? We, we, I, I, you know, I, when I got into filmmaking early on, I did documentaries, but I haven't quite figured out how to monetize a documentary mm -hmm. like I can a feature. Right. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to monetize a series. That's the new thing everyone wants to do. I want to yep. do a episodic series on this. And it's a great idea, but I'm sitting there saying, I'm not sure how, because they're so fresh and they're so new. Yeah, uh, and everyone wants to get theirs out. Um, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to, hmm. and I'm hoping our new platform, JC Plus, will have its own original series content, and then we'll see where that goes. Yeah, is this going to work? Because um, mm -hmm. you do go to streaming platforms on series that you like to watch. Mm -hmm. and my wife and I, we will see um, we'll see a show that we want to watch, but it's only on this streaming platform, and so. Right. There is an attraction to go to that stream platform and watch that one show you want to watch. And while you're there, you're like, oh, look at there. This is kind of cool. Yeah. So um, I think that's pretty brilliant with all the platforms and, you know, having one or two key series that attract viewers. Mm. Have you tried Film Hub? We have. We have an account with Film Hub. Um, on a lot of that's our foreign distribution on areas that, that we can't get to. Yeah. Um, we don't use them into what I would consider to be the general market, like Amazon and some of the larger platforms. Um, again, those are markets that we kind of go after that we can get into ourselves right. or find those contacts, but contacts where we can't get into, we've used them. Yeah. Okay. All right. And that's that there, you have a good experience with them. They're slow. Um, yeah. You know, the, um, I think we've been with them for, I think we were with them for about a year with content coming out. I mean, their, their dashboard's great. We see where things are going there. We see uh, what territories these films are going into. It's, it's the payment structure. Yes. But I think that's just a matter of time of getting into the flow. Mm -hmm. It takes time. That, it, um, you, you can't just make a film, put it on a streaming platform and say, you know, we're, we're all oh, going to. Oh, for sure. And yep. we're talking six months to sometimes seven months before you see anything that happened six months ago <laughs> it yeah, just it's right. a long process yeah. and, and there's no funny business there it's just by the time they calculate everything and get the quarter end and then get everything kind of squared away it just takes time mm -hmm. have you in the past 
you know, five years done any um, four walling where you like you started doing? Have you tried that? You know, we, 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 of course, we started that way. I mean, we yep. basically were touring, oh my goodness, for three years, every weekend, we were in churches across the country. And we wow. continued to do that till basically COVID started. And of course, that shut everything down. Yep. Um, but we saw, you know, this was the old quartet model, going to churches and we'll sing yep. some songs on Sunday night and do a love offering. And, and by the way, pick up our cassette tapes in the back. You remember right. those? Yeah. So that's kind of what these were formulated to be. Hey, come watch our film, meet Eric Estrada or some other celebrity from the film. And by the way, we have a bunch of DVDs back there. We'd love your support. Uh, I was in a church in uh, Sebring, Florida. And if you don't know much about Sebring, Florida, it's right in the middle of the state. And there's just a, a large older population there. Uh, and I remember this was two years ago or three years ago, just before COVID. And uh, they had had me there many times. And actually, I got an email from the lady of the day, when are you coming back? But uh, we showed a film and I spoke and I had my table out in the lobby and had all my movies. And one by one, these older people were walking past my table that, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't buy anything. And one lady looked at me and she said, we love you and we love what you're doing, but we don't have a DVD player. And it made me think <laughs> if they don't have a DVD player, <laughs> nobody has a DVD player. So... Did that you ask of, them if they had a VHS player? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny. They just went VHS, but um, uh, that's when it kind of hit me. Like, if these guys don't have DVD players and they're not yeah. buying uh, DVDs, then nobody is. And um, yeah. so we kind of, until we can figure out a different model to make it worth the while for all that traveling. Um, right now, we're kind of, and I think churches are still kind of skimmish with. Uh, big groups i still think there's this thing i still think you know bringing people in for things i still think there's something there so yeah now do your your clubs do they um situate themselves with the church or they're just just a bunch of people some, gathering some do. some do some don't some are just a group of people that you know meet at panera bread and some uh you know have the blessing of a supportive church that's you know in, in their community that says you can use our facilities and you can have the meetings here mm. um some are run by pastors, some are run by deacons, some are, wow. you know, just members of a church that, you know, will use the space. Do you have any numbers on about how many people are attending all of your groups? Oh, I don't know. I, you know, um, I really don't know that. I mean, you know, I, I've never really been one to say, how many people did you have at your meeting? Um, you know, I, I think we have about 22 clubs that are up and operational. There's some clubs that I've not even had a conversation with that have just mm. kind of started and I just haven't had a chance to really talk with them about what they're trying to do. Um, you know, our Orlando club is, is, you know, that was kind of the first one we started. Mm -hmm. um, they're thriving and doing really, really well that, you know, they've got, a, of course, Orlando's got all that creativity from Disney and Universal. And yeah. those guys. And so it's kind of cool that those guys are kind of on board with what we're doing and wanting to share their faith through films, but, you know, the, you know, extremely talented group of people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's neat to watch, you know, Jacksonville had a training session um, last weekend. I think they had 30 or 40 people involved in that. Um, a lot of it is, you know, I know this makes, I don't really know what the clubs are doing unless I go on Facebook and then I see yeah. what they're doing. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. Uh, they're very low monitored. It's not like we, um, yeah we feed them information. They're kind of self-sufficient in what they're wanting to do. Hmm. Some of them will call me and ask me a question and I never say no, or I will give them a, some type of story or some type of experience that has happened to me about that situation. And I'll say, well, let me tell you what happened this time. And, but I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I'm just going to say, you know, be careful of this and watch this, but mm -hmm. uh, Never one to say don't do anything because it's wrong, because I don't know right. where they are and I don't know what situation that what's all the way around it. So I mm -hmm. want to encourage people just to, you know, failing in the film business is a good thing. Yes. Uh, it's just, you just learn from it. Yes. You, um, it's, you know, your best editors are your best uh, people that have shot films. And the reason why yes. they're good editors is because uh, they've shot so many films and they, they know, they know what they're doing. So that's right. That's right. Um, if somebody wanted to start a JC Film Club, how do they go about that? 
just go to jcfilms.org. There's a tab up there. It just says production clubs. And that gives you basically all the information about the clubs, um, what to expect. Mm. You know, and they say, hey, we're interested here in Detroit, Michigan. We mm. want to start something here. Mm. We'll give you the full support as much as we can to help you get going. Mm. That's great. Um, any any new clubs on the horizon? Because I, I see your, your, your uh, map is a might be outdated a bit yeah we got to get back and change all that um um greenville south carolina i think has got a great opportunity that's uh, of course home for uh bob jones university they got a lot of talented you know christian filmmakers there they're they're new young couple starting that one um jacksonville florida is getting ready to create their first film this summer uh they got a great story and a great team in place there mm -hmm. um our team down in Dallas is brand new, so they're getting going. Our, our team in uh, Las Vegas is getting ready to start their first film this summer. Um, but, you know, one of the things I love about these clubs is the relationships that people have. Yeah. They're, they're, they're getting to know one another. They come together for different events that we have, and um, they're calling one another. They're praying for one another. They're working with one another. Um, it's kind of cool to see that. Mm, you, yeah. You know, people come together that are creatives looking for an outlet less ego and just more humble servants to say i want to use this for the kingdom yeah that's kind that's of cool, really cool. Well. yeah that's really cool so you yourself you're a writer director and producer and from what i can see on your your imdb you 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 write direct or produce five to 10 films a year. We do a bunch. Um, I'm finding myself more administrator right now. So mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm kind of liking it because I'm seeing the growth, but a lot of the creativity, um, I just have to start passing down. I, I, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm not writing as much as I used to. Um, I start at my morning at, uh, I started early in that, but I started, uh, you know, working at nine o'clock. Um, and it's all been phone calls. I haven't felt like I've got anything done today that I want to do creatively because it's always, you know, emails and, and talking and doing that. And it's a different, it's different for me because I normally uh, like to sit where I'm sitting right now and just type and write stories and come up with creative stuff. And you know, now I'm being more of an administrator. And um, so it's a different role for me, but uh, it's just as important as yeah. being the creative part of it. Wow. That's incredible. I mean, I, I, it's it's amazing what you've what has come what you have been able to motivate all around you, um, and uh, I mean, have you thought about doing like a national conference for your clubs? You know, well, like a, we we you know I just left the International Christian Film Festival last week, and so impressed with those guys and what they did. You know, they they do this award ceremony, and you feel like you're at the Grammys. I mean, they just knock it out. I I think. Um, you know, my burden or heartbeat is how do we get people, more people involved? Mm -hmm. How do we take that young person that's 18 years old that has written their 30th script and just has these ideas and they've got a mm -hmm. camera that mom bought them and they want to use it. It really comes down to, I want to be that push. I want to be that guy that says, let's go do this. Well, mm -hmm. we don't have a million dollars. We don't need a million dollars. And that's getting right. this learning curve away from the haves and the have nots with the film industry yeah, um, I think the Christian film industry has created that there's the haves and then there's the have nots and the have nots can't do what the haves have. And I think I want to be a, I want to foster an atmosphere that changes that so that mm -hmm. these young people don't get discouraged. These young people um, don't feel like what God's asked them to do or given them the passion to do is in vain because I feel like if they're, yeah, and you've met these people in Hollywood in your time, when you have, when you have the acting bug, you know, it's worse than COVID. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it's in you. <laughs> and if you have it, for the most part, this passion to share stories, God gave it to you because yeah. um, nobody would want it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. It's a rejection business and they still have it. And so we, mm -hmm. we have to find a way for these people with this passion that want to use it for the kingdom, open up doors for them to find a way to do it. And that's yeah. what we want to be about. 
So um, what do you see as being some of the biggest hurdles to filmmakers getting started? Well, I think if you were to ask nine out of 10 Christian filmmakers, they're going to say finances. And, and, that's, yeah. and that is a hurdle. Um, but we've never in my business in a 50 film worried about money. Huh. We just do it and uh, mm -hmm. we figure it out. And um, I think a lot of it is, you know, people get so worked up. You've heard these statistics about people that have an idea for a film, but the film never gets made. Yeah. What? Nine out of 10. I have an idea, but I, it's, nine out of 10, of these films will never get made. If, if the statistics not bigger than that, um, you just have to do it. You, you have to, yeah. whether or not it's something you want to shoot on your phone and, and learn from it with, with a flashlight. Um, we have to grow on our craft, you know, Christian music just didn't happen. It, it took time to evolve and we need young people yep. involved in this industry more than ever. Yep. Cause I think that's going to take the film industry to a new level. We just can't discourage these young people with mm -hmm. you're not there yet. You are yep. there. You're ready. You just need a push. We just, we just, you just need somebody to help you. Yep. How important are the Christian film festivals to, uh, this? I think they're tremendously important. I think it's a great way for people to show their work as well as um, probably more importantly, the networking, just mm -hmm. the social interaction. Yeah. It was so encouraging to walk down the hallways of these film festivals. You know, most of us, they have prayer rooms and people praying for one another, people uh, connecting with one another. Um, I had, uh, less egos and, yeah. and more and mm -hmm. more really passionate about, you know, um, what the, what their calling is and how do they share that through film what are your favorite festivals i you know you're gonna think i, I host six christian film festivals every year across the country um in different cities across the country i've never been to a film this was this the icff in 11 years of being a filmmaker really <laughs> this was my first film festival i had ever attended because i huh. felt like it was all going to be a bunch of christians getting together and saying look at my work i'm so important look at me i'm so great and when Marty asked me to come speak at it, I, I said, you're not going to believe this. I don't even know what y'all do there because I've never been to one. I host right. my own and I know what I do, but I don't know if it's what you do. And um, so I was blown away. I was very impressed. I was very mm. impressed by it. Um, I do think it's important. I think, uh, you know, the, the Bible talks about fellowship. We get together yeah. with other believers. And I think that's important as we continue to grow in whatever ministry God called you to do. Mm -hmm. we, you know, Will you be attending some more this year? Yeah, I, I want to go to the NRB. I've never been to that one. Um, yeah. Everyone says you got to go to the NRB, but um, you know, and I, I'm going to continue to support the ICFF and, yeah. and, and their next year. Um, but again, I, I we, even this morning I was thinking about creating two more film festivals in states where we don't have them yet. Ohio being one, and um, another one down in maybe South Florida. So, what is your film festival called? Well, they're called Christian Film Events. Uh, these are events that happen that we have them, uh, Chicago, Dallas, uh, here in West Virginia. We, this weekend will be our uh, Florida Faith and Family Film Festival in Orlando. Um, so we, we, we host, mm. we did one up in uh, Michigan. Uh, they're very community oriented. So, you know, of course, they're not, we don't have several thousand people, but we'll have a couple hundred people that show up that want to watch films. Uh, we teach the different classes, acting classes, production classes, how to get involved in the business, how to fundraise, all these other type of classes, breakout sessions yeah. in the festival. Uh, the one in Florida that's happening this weekend, Dean Kane will be there. Um, so we try to bring in some celebrities to kind of push yeah. what we're, what's happening. You can find JC Films at jcfilms.org. You'll find links in the show notes of this episode to JC Films' YouTube channel. And when JC Plus launches in June, that link will be updated. If you want to join a JC Films Production Club or become part of their Producers Club, you'll find links for those as well. Our time together draws to a close, valiant filmmaker. We trust your heart has been warmed and your soul nourished. Your host has been Todd Schaefer, creative director of the faith-based independent production house Glorious Films and animation director at Tonic DNA, where he toils on productions for the major Hollywood establishment. 
If you wish to support the work of the ministry, or simply buy your overworked host a fancy $5 coffee to keep him warm and caffeinated as he pecks out his next script, you can do so on our website at ministryofmotionpictures.org. Again, that's ministryofmotionpictures.org. And you can help spread the word by feeding the algorithms when you share, like, link, follow, subscribe, or leave a nasty comment on our social media. Until we see you again, I adjure you, in the name of our Lord, go forth and boldly create film. What we do in life echoes in eternity.